Hello and welcome to the Stitching Journal Club episode two. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you to everyone who watched my first video and who subscribed and who liked it and who sent me the most kind messages. I am humbled, uh, kind of speechless, so I won't overstate it, but I just wanted to take a few moments to say thank you. Okay, so just to get right into it, the first thing I wanted to do was to show you guys one of my favorite stitching related um, purchases that I've made. And it is a DMC mug and it's gold and shiny. I mean, uh, I had to get it as soon as I saw it. Um, I got it from the DMC website um, and I tried to find it again to link to it, but it's gone. Um, so hopefully if you saw it uh, last year when it was available, you got one. And if you did, let me know. Uh, maybe we can make some sort of DMC mug club or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, uh, but it's so great. I love it. I hope I never break it. So um, now to get to the stitching, um, like I predicted, I was only wanting to stitch on heart sampler for the past couple of weeks. So I'll show you my progress. I'm not done, but I finished all of page seven and I started working on page eight. I'm stitching this on a 28 count antique white. This square, well, let's get a little bit closer. This square was just awful. To, well, not awful, but it was so tricky, like deceptively tricky. It looks so simple, um, but I made mistake after mistake. At some point I was just going with it. Um, I mean, it looks okay from far away. So I'm not like, I decided not to go back and finish and take everything out, but oh man, that was a challenge. But I'm working on page eight right now, and I'm so close to being done. I cannot wait to finish. Um, just to show you out of the hoop, the whole thing, what it looks like. That's what I have so far. Um, this has been such a joy to stitch on, actually. Like, I've loved every single stitch. So the model is stitched on a pink fabric and the designer um, used for the lightest color used a, a white um, color to bring out the highlights. Um, that's really not, that really doesn't um, apply here on white fabric. So um, in some cases I stitched it where I thought it could bring out some nice texture. Other places I left it out. And so at the end, what I'm gonna do is, um, for example, that's a good one. Mm, wait, this one. <laughs> These flowers, they have some some of that white stitching around it. I think when I'm done, what I'll do is um, let's get you in frame. Um, maybe put some sparkly beads around it. That might look good. Or I might stitch in a white um, to bring out the texture. Um, it just depends on how I feel when it's all done. Um, there are other places like that where at the end I'll just go around and embellish it some to make it my own on purpose rather than <laughs> from mistakes. So there's heart sampler so far. Oh my gosh, it's I can't stop looking at it. It's so great. It's so beautiful. I love it. So since that was the only project I actively stitched on the past couple of weeks, I thought what I'd do now was to show you a few more um, projects that I have uh, on the go, um, just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that I like to stitch on. So the first is um, The Pointed Fifth by Long Dog Samplers. I might just have a tiny start, just have that little bunny finished. I love this one uh, because of all the animal motifs and... Um, all the hidden sort of, in every long deck sampler has one, but I uh, like the hidden motifs, all the animals. So there's that. I'm doing it on a 32 count fabric in DMC 3808. It's gonna look so great when it's done. That's gonna be a showpiece. Next is, uh, 
Unicorn Tapestry by Tiny Modernist. Just another tiny start. This is actually one of the first um, projects I started and I put it away um, because I didn't think I was good enough to stitch it. Um, I think I'm good enough now, so I'll pick it back up again soon. I started in the middle, which is unusual for me. I tend to like starting on one of the corners. So what I'm going to do is stitch my way over to the corner and move my way down. Um, this again is on a 32 count fabric in some blue fabric. I don't remember what it's called. Next is Froggy Mushroom Cottage by Studio Ansi True or NC True. My upstairs neighbors are stomping around. I really hope you can't hear that. I'm using a microphone so that you hopefully can't hear that. But if you can, I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, this is another tiny start, uh, mostly because I, I messed something up here and I had to frog a bunch. I, I took it out and, and couldn't bring myself to pick it back up again. Um, but it's going to be really cute when it's finished. Oh, this is on a 28 count Springfield Sage. Next is Bookworm by Clayford Designs. This is on a 36 count. And I started doing it two over two, but switched to uh, one thread over two. And I think I'm gonna keep going that way. I'm doing this one because I believe that there is an alternate universe in which I am a dragon sitting on top of a horde of books. So I'm stitching this just to honor no alternate universe dragon me. I think she's very happy. <laughs> so there's that. That's gonna be really cute when it's done too. Finally, um, this is Moon Phase Bell Pull by Tiny Modernist. This is a long and skinny one. And I, on the bottom, there are some trees some in black that I probably won't stitch. I think I'm gonna just end off the rectangle and have that be a little moon phase sign once it's done. I have a lot of moon phase patterns. I'll probably end up with like one in every room, but I love them, so <laughs> it doesn't hurt anyone. Um, so yeah, those are my projects for now. Hopefully you have a bit of an idea of the kinds of things I like to stitch. I'm going to do a separate video on um, full coverage stitching, I think, because I have a bunch of those patterns, but I haven't really started them yet. And I'll talk about why in that in um, that video. Right. Today's journal club topic is going to cover my favorite science fact, which is that birds are dinosaurs. Yes, it's true. Specifically, modern birds are descended from theropod dinosaurs, a group that includes Spinosaurus, T. Rex, and Velociraptor. These days, it's pretty common knowledge, but not so much when I was young. I think I learned it in my late teens um, or so, late high school, and it really blew me away. Um, I think in hindsight, the biggest thing that I realized then was that dinosaurs, instead of being these mythological creatures, were animals. They ate food, they raised young, they had family groups, and they survived the best they could in the world. And that was a pretty big mind shift for high school me. So the idea that birds were related to dinosaurs isn't exactly a new one. In fact, one of the earliest ways to classify dinosaurs was by calling them it in a way that translates to literally bird-hipped versus lizard-hipped, which describes the way um, the pelvis is oriented. Thomas Henry Huxley was the most famous early proponent of this idea. He came to his conclusion after studying Archaeopteryx very closely in the late 1800s. His theory, however, was eventually superseded by the idea that birds instead were descended from a type of archosaur um, similar to ancient crocodilians. And this was the prevailing theory until the mid 20th century um, when you know, scientists had more fossils to compare, including some really amazingly preserved feathered dinosaurs, as well as more sophisticated techniques to trace evolutionary relationships. 
By the time the first Jurassic Park movie came out in the early 90s, um, the evidence was pretty well stacked in favor of, you know, birds being dinosaurs. Um, just to go off on a tangent, I loved Jurassic Park when I was young, but it also terrified me. Did any of you have that experience? I don't know how else to describe it. It was like my favorite movie, but I was not able to watch it again until I was much older. Uh, random tangent. Okay, so to end this segment, I am going to show you guys some pictures of modern dinosaurs. Um, so the first is a shoe bill. Um, there are several pictures and they all sort of look like this ancient guy. Um, so I don't know if you, I don't know about you, but I can't look into that face and, and say that's not a dinosaur. The next is a picture of uh, emu legs. Um, without the context of the baby emu, would you think those are bird feet? I'm not sure I would. And finally, these are our baby egrets, um, essentially looking at us from across millions of years. So those are some of my favorite pictures of of birds slash modern dinosaurs. Um, do you have one? Uh, let me know. I, I love birds, so I won't say no to seeing them. Today's recommendation is the PBS show Nova. They recently did a two-part sequence called Dinosaur Apocalypse, which follows a group of researchers as they attempt to piece together a sequence of events of what happened on the day the asteroid hit the Earth from the perspective of one spot in the Hell Creek Formation here in the United States. The whole thing is just fascinating. And at the end, um, they talk a little bit about why um, birds are the only dinosaurs we have left. I hope if you watch it, let me know. Um, and we can talk about it. Um, so that's the end of episode two of Stitching Journal Club. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and um, I'll see you next time.